The Gardener by Sarah Stewart. The story is about a little girl who moves to the city with a suitcase full of seeds, where she moves in with her uncle. Through letters to her parents who own a farm, she tells the story of how she brightens her uncle's gloomy bakery and character with a little bit of dirt and seeds. It's really a heartwarming story and the neatest part for me is that the story is all told in a series of letters. And the next best part of the book are the illustrations. This pastel color palette is just striking and lively amidst the setting of the book, uh, which is in the Great Depression era. The hand-drawn illustrations with the bold outlines and those expressive faces on the characters is just all a true work of art and so very unique uh, compared to other gardening themed books. We Are the Gardeners by Joanna Gaines and Kids. And what I love most about this book is its wholesomeness. It encourages family values and morals. The story is about the Gaines family starting their own family garden, the obstacles, the mistakes they overcame and learned from to grow a happy garden. The trials and joys of gardening are the big message in the story. What I find delightful is that factual gardening knowledge is presented in the story, but in a fun and whimsical way. My husband, children, and I are also self-taught gardeners and one of our biggest bonds that we share together. And so this book also holds a special place on my shelf and in my heart for that reason. We are also the gardeners. How Does My Garden Grow by Gerda Mueller. The story is about a little girl who lives in the city and her veggies come from the supermarket until she visits her grandparents in the country and discovers how much there's to learn about things that grow. Again, a message about family bonds and values, uh, this one between grandparents and grandchild. The story follows through all four seasons and all the work that the garden holds through them is inspiring to any family that might want to start a garden. The story also has all sorts of lists and instructions for gardening. So while it's not a gardening handbook, it is still educational. The combination of a story and gardening information I find to be delightful and my kids engaging. We also love this author, Gerda Mueller, and the illustrations in her books are always just beautiful and filled with awe-inspiring nature. Another book by Gerda Mueller, and this is Spring, part of a series of wordless board books to discover the seasons. And you heard that correctly, wordless picture books, a wonderful opportunity to really inspire creativity and imagination, not just in our littles, but in our own storytelling. The wonderful thing is that the story is always different. There are always new things to discover and new stories to tell also in any language spoken in your home. 
a creative and gentle way to introduce and celebrate the seasons with our little ones. We also love displaying these books on our nature table. Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt by Kate Messner. Another sweet story about the bonds of gardening with our loved ones. This one is about a grandmother and granddaughter tending to the garden through the course of the year. Through the story, we explore the busy hidden world under the dirt. Earthworms, digging, snakes, hunting, and animals burrowing. And up in the garden where the world is full of green leaves and sprouts and growing fruits and veggies. Another delightful story about being rooted with nature. Over and Under the Pond by Kate Messner. We love the series so much that we own every book in it. In this story, a mother and son go rowing on a pond and through the story we discover the plants and animals that make up the ecosystem of a pond. We've experienced that ponds become so lively during the springtime. Last year we were able to observe the life cycle of frogs by visiting a pond over several weeks. And so this book I find to be a valuable resource for a freshwater nature study. In every book of this series, there is also a back index with information on the animals and insects mentioned throughout the story. Pond by Jim LaMarche. I probably butchered that. Uh, this story begins in winter when a boy finds water in an old junk-filled pit in his neighborhood. With his idea of restoring this pond, most of the story takes place through spring when Matt and his friends come together to clear the debris and bring the abandoned pond back to life. This book captivated me because at the heart of this book is respect for the natural world. The message is that there is hope for our footprint on earth and we can restore the damage made by our own kind. And it's just delightful to watch the story unfold and the pond coming back to life, especially through the stunning illustrations. The illustrator does a wonderful job at depicting a serene nature. I also enjoy the touch of realism in the illustrations. My Friend Earth by Patricia McLachlan. This is a poetic children's book, the story describing and celebrating everything Earth does for us. Super engaging and not just in the stunning illustrations, but these fun creative cutouts and shapes of the pages. A wonderful book for celebrating upcoming Earth Day. Well, in my opinion, Earth Day should be every day.
B, A Peek a Through Picture Book by Britta Teckentrup. And I believe I've shared this book before in another favorite children's uh, book video. I'm sharing it again because the spring season is a wonderful opportunity to present the study of bees. They're all around us, at least here in Florida, contributing to the beauty of the environment. So another clever book with peekaboo cutouts or holes on each page revealing flowers, plants, and a look inside a beehive. The plot of the story takes place as we follow a busy little bee through its active day pollinating flowers. This book is one book of a uh, part of another wonderful series of children's picture books. The Little Book of Backyard Bird Songs by Andrea Pennington, an enchanting introduction to backyard birds. Essentially, it's a field guide with the recordings of 12 bird songs. So this is our second year studying the identification of birds and we're just fascinated by them. This book immediately captured all of my children's interest. The sound quality is really good, a lot better than expected honestly. Each spread provides basic information and an interesting fact or two of each bird. This is a new book to us and while out in our backyard and in nature, my children have already been able to identify bird songs around us. A Nest is Noisy, A Butterfly is Patient, An Egg is Quiet by Diana Aston. A series of nature books for children, in my opinion, older elementary. There are more books to this award-winning series and we own three. So let me start with the elegance to the art and calligraphy in this book. As soon as they arrived, my teen daughter, who is passionate and knowledgeable in art, was immediately awed and pointed out the brush strokes, the watercolor, earthy tones, and penmanship. So this is a book not only for children, but older children and adults. We can all marvel in it, and not only in the illustrations, but also in the poetic text, in larger cursive font, and the smaller supporting educational details in each spread. What I find really interesting is that you'll find featured the more familiar, let's say birds and nests or butterflies, but also others not so familiar. For example, nests of army ants or orangutans in the rainforest canopy. Just fascinating information. These are beautiful to display anywhere in the house, on a bookshelf, on a coffee table. They serve wonderfully for our nature journaling and just so much more than just a picture book, in my opinion. All right, friends, so that's it for today, but there will be a part two to this video so that we can share our favorite spring resources such as reference books, activity books, independent readers, read alouds, board games, and more. I hope that the spring season so far has filled your life with warmth, sunshine, hope, love, and happiness.